Have you ever thought about the games you played as a kid? More importantly, have you ever realized that if you went back in time and played yourself at those games, it would be a complete knockout? And you know what they say, there's no better power trip than beating up a small child. For me, one of those games was Mastermind. For those of you that don't know, Mastermind is a children's board game with a code maker and a code breaker. The code maker chooses a four color code and the code breaker guesses what it is. The code maker then gives them somewhere between zero and four black and white pins. A white pin means one of the colors was correct, but it was in the wrong spot. A black pin means there was the right color in the right spot. The code breaker then has 10 guesses to get it right. It's pretty straightforward, but as a small child, I just couldn't do it. However, recently my friend and I went on a little nostalgia trip, and we realized that we can pretty much get it every time. But being our competitive selves, we wanted a way to figure out who was better. Our first idea was to count how many rows it took to complete. However, we quickly realized that there was a lot of randomness on that front, as different codes take different amount of guesses to find. Then we also tried timing each other, but that fell into the same problem. But consider this. In a game of Mastermind, there's not actually any thinking done on the part of the code maker. They make the code, then they just say how correct it is. So you could set up a program that would make the code, then both people guess and it's a race to see who can get it first. But the players still need to keep in mind the maximum number of guesses that they have. So how do we make this? My initial thought was to set up a game server where people could connect and then they can play the game through there. However, the less server code I need to write the better. Also, there are already a million mastermind botting competitions that exist, so I wouldn't want to have public lobbies without first implementing some sort of anti-cheat, and my approach to anti-cheat looks a lot like Valve's. Combine that with the fact that there's not a large market for people wanting to play mastermind against random people on the internet who they can't talk to, and it makes sense to explore another path. And that is peer-to-peer -peer networking. Contrary to the server setup, in a peer-to-peer -peer system, the two computers can talk to each other directly. What small issue? I have no clue how peer-to-peer -peer works. So, when learning a new technology, my favorite path is to start by creating a very simple test. And for this, that was a chat app. So, you open the site and it would give you an ID. You give that to your friend who enters it into their box, and it creates a secure connection between you and your friend's computer. Now, let's not mention the fact that in order to share the ID, you first need to have a way to send the ID, which means you already have a chat app. But... Then you can just send messages through that connection, and it'll display on both ends. Now, I just need somebody to test it with. Wait, what are you doing here, Steve? Sup? Well, since you're here, do you want to help me test some code? I wondered how long it would take you to realize you needed me. Wait, what? Well, let's do the math. The average AI spawn video that doesn't contain Steve gets 226.5 views. On the other hand, an average Steve containing video pulls in 540. Even if you only look at your recent videos, my presence in a video is worth 70 views. You were in one video and you said like four- The numbers are live! Okay, okay. Would you please help me test some code? Well, since you asked so nicely. So we connected and we were able to send messages. But what Steve didn't know is I planted a bomb in the code. You see, I made a mistake. Nay, a feature while writing the display function. I used some unsafe code that allowed a person sending a message to edit the HTML of the page. This meant that I could send an image by adding the image tag to a message. However, images have a property called onload, which means when they load, they'll execute some sort of JavaScript. So if I wanted to, I could display alerts or even redirect Steve to any virus download I wanted. So peer to peer works. Now onto Megamind, I mean master, I mean Minesweeper. Wait, I actually just messed those up. <laughs> so, there's one player who hosts the game, one player who joins the game, and an option for a single player if you're lonely, represent. There are also some options you can choose for each game, such as changing the length of the code, the number of guesses, and how many colors there are to choose from. So, when you enter a game with someone else, there's a 3 second countdown so both people can get ready, then it's just a race. You make your guess by pressing space, and it instantly fills in with the feedback pins. Whoever cracks the code the fastest gets the point. But I wanted to make an eSport which means I needed the eSport aesthetic. You know, the gamer look. Red and black. Perfection. Now it's time to test Steve, get back here. And then it was time for the first ever Mastermind World Championship. But first, I just wanted to give a very basic strategy guide. You know, so you could do things like understand what's happening in the video. That seems kind of important. So the first thing I like to do is to fill the first layer with only reds. This is because it allows me to see exactly how many red pins there are. So you can see that we didn't get any feedback pins and this means that there aren't any reds. So I'll try again with all greens. So I got one black pin, which means I know that there is exactly one green pin in the code. So I'm going to keep one green pin and then test with the rest blue. 
So I got two black pins, which means my green is in the right spot, and I have a blue pin in one of the three spots. So now I can just go through with the same logic for all the other colors until I get the right code. And now, the moment you've been waiting for. The Mastermind Grand Finals. Ignore the fact that there were only two people that even knew that this was happening. In the left square, we have AI Spawn. And in the right square, we have Steve. Players, take your positions for the first game. Wait, actually, no, it's not finally it didn't. No. Yo, there are no colors in this. There are no colors. There don't be any colors. colors oh, these are a myth. There we go. Oh, wait, who won? I did. Are you sure? What? What is it? Uh, orange, white, orange, orange. Frames? What frames? There are no frames. I don't, I've never seen a frame in my life. What even is a frame? Yo, this game running 60 FPS on. Oh my god, I'm insane! What was it? Uh, purple, orange, blue, purple. Okay, that's the one I was about to put in. Wow. Like, I, I had my purple hovering over. Wait, I'm insane? Oh my. How insane are you? Wait, I'm insane? Wait, I'm insane? Wait a minute, oh my, oh I'm god. Insane. You moved faster than me. Okay, well I ran out of space. Uh, by the way, uh, your coat, has anyone ever run out of space before? Like in the history uh, of? Okay, you'll, you'll see on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is it? You know, it's not bad, it's just it doesn't really make sense. The, the thing that shows you what row you're on goes off the rows. Oh, that's fine. It also does not automatically lose me, even though I should automatically lose. Well, the thing is, I can also run out of space. But then we actually don't want to Uh, then, then it says there's a draw. I would give you a hint, but it's like neck and neck. But, I don't think uh, it is. Like point wise. It so. is not neck and neck whatsoever. No, point, point wise. Oh. It's 9 8. Okay, I have see. it. I don't have it. I'm very close to getting it. I that. very much have it. Ah. Red, white, purple, blue. I had a three thing. I had, I had a three black and I knew kind of what things were. Like. As you can tell, Mastermind is the perfect esport and it will be sweeping the nation. So MLG, ESL, hit me up. Maybe I can sell you the broadcasting rights for, say, a million dollars. As always, if you want to play this game, there's a link in the description and also one for the GitHub repo if you're into that. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're new here, I'd recommend checking out this video where I make a game and then hack it.